All right again peeps, I've gone and done it again. I bought another tent off eBay. <laughs> Uh, I said before in a few other videos that once I bought the Helm one, that was going to be the last shelter I bought for quite a while. I broke that promise. <laughs> uh, this was uh, such a bargain on eBay, I just couldn't say no. My reasons for buying this tent in particular, I'm going to get onto in just a second, but I'm going to show you what it is. It's a uh, it's just turned up, I've just opened the box so wait for it, now I haven't tampered with this at all except cut the box open because I wanted to show you and prove to you the sort of bargains that you can get on eBay so this is a Van Gogh Helvellyn two person tent and it's still in its polythene plastic bag the person selling it has never opened this there's no oh, it's still tied up on top it's never been opened they've not set it up nothing it's got the tags on it this is a brand new tent but I didn't pay brand new prices for it oh no not on your Nelly I've been looking around at the Van Gogh Helvellyn and there was a, a few different prices on, on eBay. I think one of them, like brand new, from a, you know a, an outdoor company, was as much as something like £154. Then there was like 130 Then there was ones that were sort of closer to like 100 Then I found one, I think it might have been second hand, it had only been used a couple of times, that was £90. And then suddenly I stumbled across this little gem and the guy literally, yeah, never taken it out of the bag and he wanted like a, a best offer on it. I think it was something like, I think it might have been £75 or make an offer and it's ten it was £10 postage and packaging but he, but he said make an offer so... <coughs> excuse me so I thought well let's be realistic let's go a tenner less than the asking price so I said 65 so 65 pound plus 10 pound for the postage and packaging 75 quid he only went and accepted it so I've got this tent for well under a hundred pound and it's brand new you can see there's there's nothing wrong with that anyway that's got to be one of the best bargains I've ever found on eBay. So I'm really pleased with that. So just thought I'd let you know. It just goes to show you, don't just buy the first thing you see. You know, if you've got 10 Van Gogh Helvellyns, for example, on eBay, don't just go with the first one. Have a look around, because I nearly went for the one that was £90. I thought, yeah, as long as it's under £100, quid, I'm f I, I can justify buying that but no I looked around and then suddenly this one turned up so my reasons for wanting another tent it's a two person tent and I wanted a two person tent for myself so for any sort of the long winter evenings where weight isn't an issue and I'm going to be spending a lot of time in a tent if the weather's bad and I need a strong tent I thought this could be quite useful. Now the Helm 1 is very strong in the weather, it's in bad weather, it's it's nice and light. Uh, you know, it's still fairly stealthy and it's got a fair amount of room. But I just felt like being a bit selfish, a bit greedy and going, let's have a two-man tent all to myself. I like the colour. The weight's not too bad. I think it's... I know it's under three kilos. I'm going to check and put all the stats in this little video. Um, and I wanted that bit more space. It's a semi geodesic tent. It's got a decent sized porch on it. So I can sort of hold up in it for a while if, if need be. And also, there's a few walks that I'm going to be doing in the near future 
especially around Cambridgeshire and Hertfordshire, where there aren't a lot of good wild camping spots. And I've been looking at campsites, semi-wild campsites, normal campsites, in the local area to these walks. And I've sort of planned out a few sort of little weekends where I can do a few of these walks, because they're only short walks, and I can camp in a campsite at a very reasonable price. And I thought, I don't want to be taking a little backpacking tent to a campsite. I want to be taking something with a bit more room, you know, that I can get changed in, that I can cook in, and stuff like that. Um, and that was kind of my reasoning behind wanting a tent like this, really. And I didn't want to spend too much money, but I knew as a two-person tent, it's you know, I'm going to end up paying a little bit more, and especially for a semi-geodesic. I will probably share this with Candice at some point. It's only got one entrance, one doorway, and she does like a two-man tent that's got two doors. So we'll still try it out. She's she's keen to give it a try, but sorry, Candice, this is my tent. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. Anyway, sorry for waffling on. Let's crack it open. First time it's ever been opened. Oh, it's got that new smell. I love that. There's a little picture of the floor plan, if you can see that. Semi-geodesic stable structure. Internal storage pockets. O-shaped inner doors. Part mesh inner door. Factory tape seams, fast pack tent bag with compression straps. I do like that about the Van Gogh tents. Fire retardant fabrics meets European EN5912 safety standards. Weather tested by certified test centre. That's good to know. The Van Gogh, rather, Helvellyn, is a semi geodesic two man tent which is ideal for year round trekking particularly on rougher terrain because of its excellent self-supporting structure. Part of the Van Gogh Experience collection it is ideal for those where weight and pack size have been kept to a minimum. Perfect in all environments, this easy pitch tent is great for wild camps and multi-day hikes. They're actively encouraging wild camping. There we go, you heard it first. And it is quite a compact sort of size. Um, you, know, you could easily fit it down the side of your rucksack like that inside and then have all your stuff next to it so yeah I, I can easily fit this in my Talon 44 which is good it's got to meet that criteria um, it's a, a, an all in one pitch which is brilliant I, I don't think I'll ever buy another tent that's pitching a first now I, that's one of the things I'll only always buy pitch all in one just because if the weather's bad you're screwed. Um, the fly sheet is Protex 70D. It's got a 3000 millimeter hydrostatic head. Uh, breathable polyester inner tent. The ground sheet is 70D 6000 millimeter hydrostatic head. So that's pretty good. 3000, 6000. I like the sound of that. I think I wouldn't, for a fly sheet, I wouldn't go below 3000 millimeters. Really, on the height on the HH, it's just you question its its durability and its waterproofness. After that, I think could be wrong though. Um, the poles are power light alloy poles, which is good. I like that's another thing as well. Is I I don't really like the fiberglass poles anymore, just because I've had them snap before in strong winds and stuff they only last a certain amount of time whereas the alloy poles are pretty tough the important bit the trail weight is 2.46 kilos the trail weight okay by the way is the total weight minus the tent bag pole bag peg bag and secondary pegs i didn't know that interesting total weight is 2.8 kilos so it's a so it's total weight is only about kilo more than my helm one yeah anyways i'll keep the tagger on it for now let's get it open this is exciting 
Yeah, good fast pack system with these bags. I absolutely love that. And you can cinch it all down. Just angle the camera down so you can see what I'm doing. Oh, the new smell. It's amazing. There we go, that's sort of what it looks like. You can open the door. Where is it? You can open it from both sides. You can have one side open or the other side open. A bit like the Van Gogh blade. A few of the Van Gogh tents are like that. It's a really good, good design feature. This isn't really a review video, by the way. This is this is a look at video. What I'm going to do is take this tent out um, at a slightly later date than what I'm filming now and test it out. I'm not really going to pitch it in the garden. I'm going to try and do it on its own little wild camp somewhere. The pegs, oh, they're brand new pegs. Mate, I'm not, well, of course they are, Tom. There's our repair kit patch repair kit and then wow they're the normal shepherds hook uh, stakes and they're pretty lightweight they're not bad pegs I mean they do bend a little bit over time you can't go wrong with the like the Y beam or X or V stakes they're really good I personally prefer them they're a bit lighter and they're much much stronger However, these are still pretty good, uh, but I know that I will have to replace these probably at some point because they do tend to bend quite easily. So we've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen. So fifteen pegs, and it said there was spares as well, so you don't need all of those. But it's advisable to take all of those because, like I say, you don't know when you're going to lose a peg, buckle a peg, stuff like that. Onto the poles. So they're those power light alloy poles. And it looks like they could be colour coded. Blimey, hang on. <laughs> um, I don't want to set them up in here. Don't just bad luck to uh, extend the tent pole indoors. <laughs> Won't know until we set all this up, really. It's uh, it's kind of like um, it's kind of like I'm cooking something, um, and you don't know what it is. So he's got some garlic out, he's just cut up some carrots, but you don't know what it is. <laughs> anyway, so that's the poles, and then we've got the, I love this this green, this Pamir green I think it's called, or cactus green, that Van Gogh do, I absolutely love that colour. Fly sheet, and the inner is all clipped inside of it as well. Now, the orange, the grey, and the green. I, I, it's just, it's just such a good colour scheme. I know it sounds really weird, but I absolutely love it. With, I think Van Gogh do some of the best tents. Van Gogh, Wild Country, OEX do some decent shelters as well. Now, they're my, th at the moment, they're my three favourite affordable tent makers. Guy lines are a little bit bright, I know. Um, fairly heavy, but you could always swap those out if you really wanted to. Anyways, right, it's not going to make much sense like this. So, let's take it out for a little wild camp. Good evening, everyone. So, you've probably just seen the little introduction that I did back at home regarding my new 
Van Gogh Helvellyn two-person tent. Well, here we are. We're inside the tent. I'm joined by the very lovely Candice. She's tucked up in her sleeping bag. Uh, I've got my Tom Outdoors hat on and she has got her Mrs. Outdoors hat kindly given to us by Hambo. Cheers, mate. Candice won't wear it on camera because she thinks she looks stupid in hats, but it's kept her head really warm. Uh, but yeah, so she's hiding in her sleeping bag. Um, you toasty, you warm? Yeah. yeah, she is, bless her. So, you're probably wondering where we are. We are on top of Ditchling Beacon, the highest point in East Sussex tonight. This is literally the maiden voyage of this tent. I've not even set it up in the garden. I've literally gone, sod it, let's take it out. What's the worst that can happen? And we've figured it out and managed to set it up and it's, it's all right. Probably could be pitched a little a little tighter maybe, but for a first time pitch, it's, it's all right. And we found a really nice spot hidden amongst some trees and stuff just off of the South Downs Way footpath, uh, a, a quieter section of Ditchling Beacon. We've, we've eaten already. We've had this US MRE menu 15, elbow macaroni in tomato sauce. I reviewed it probably a long time ago, so didn't really feel the need to share it with you, but it was very nice. We had some instant mashed potatoes with it as well, which made it even better. We only had the one side tonight that we shared, and that was this Recorder League Passion Fruit Cider, 4%. Pear cider blended with passion fruit made from pure Swedish spring water. And it's a really nice cider. I haven't had that one for a while. I think I'd give it probably an 8.75. It's it's above an eight anyway. It's a it's a very good side of that. As passion fruit ciders go, I do like that one. Anyways, yeah, we finished that. So we'll be telling you a little bit more about Ditchling Beacon and the Iron Age Hill Fort as well that's here in the morning, and we'll show you the views. We can see all the lights on down below. It looks pretty cool. My mate Ben, London Outdoors, he wild camped here. A while ago now I think in the summer and yeah we we pretty much kind of copied the route he took and sort of sort of the the spot roughly where he he wild camped so um yeah plagiarism's the the greatest form of flattery so cheers mate yeah I um he did recommend that I come up here and I thought yeah I'll take him up on his word and come up here he also kind of inspired me to to buy a two another two person tent uh, like a semi geodesic one that I could use on my own for like a really luxurious camp where I was kind of tent bound so if it was like really bad weather in winter I could just stay in it and it would be spacious enough not that the helm one isn't spacious but I just wanted something semi geodesic two person and of course it also serves a dual purpose that if me and Candice are doing like a long distance walk or sort of a big walk where the weather could be bad or really windy and you need that semi geodesic strength we could you know we could use this tent because it's it's not as heavy as our Puma OEX Puma 2 which we're still going to use and we still love that tent that is still our two person tent of choice but this one, the Helvellyn, is slightly lighter. So I'll just read you the stats again here in case you've forgotten. So it's trail weight, which is the total weight minus the tent bag, pole bag, peg bag, and secondary pegs, which it didn't come with any secondary pegs because we used them all for the guy lines as well. Trail weight is 2.46 kilos. The total weight is 2.8 kilos. So you can just see, if you did away with all the the bags you know you could save a little bit of weight there um, it says pitch time was 10 minutes it probably took us a little bit longer as it was our first time 
setting it up. The hydrostatic head on the fly sheets, 3,000 millimeters, which I would say is about the minimum I would go. Anything less than that, and I'd, I'd probably question how waterproof it is. So, yeah, that's 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 fine by me. And the ground sheet is a 6,000 millimeter hydrostatic head. Of course, it has to be a bit stronger, it being the ground sheet. The poles are power light alloy lightweight aluminium poles they even say on them like front pole back pole stuff like that so it's got three poles one that goes over the front here near where the camera is and two that sort of cross over and go through the back which you might be able I don't know if you can sort of see the the shape of the tent it sort of does go to a slight point and of course the doors behind the camera uh, it's the the usual orange, gunmetal grey and Pamir or cactus green that a lot of Van Gogh tents come in. Great colour scheme. We split the weight between us for the short walk from the car park to here. I think Candice had the poles and the pegs and I had the, the fly sheet and the inner. We are in a sort of little sheltered sort of dip off of the main path so it's not as windy here. There's a slight breeze that we can feel and it is, it's holding its shape really well. Candice can sit up in the tent. I can't quite. <laughs> so <laughs> the benefits of being small as she said. Um, whereas the Puma, of course, I can sit up in. I don't want to, I don't want to compare this tent to the Puma because that would be unfair. Because of course, for luxury in space and even strength of design, the Puma trumps it. However, the colour of this one's a bit stealthier, it being green. It's lighter, it packs down smaller. So it's, it's, it's got some uses that me and Candice you know, could find, mm -hmm. really, for when we do, as I say, like a long distance route. Um, we want to do, what, have you farted? <laughs> no, what are you laughing about? Keep up a baby jumping. Did I? Oh, sorry, <laughs> I put my hand up. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so I mean things like the Thames Estuary path when we do that together be quite a good little tent to take mm. um, yeah it's the only problem with the RX Puma is it is quite a heavy tent but what you get for that weight is is brilliant so yeah so don't worry we're not getting rid of that tent um, we're keeping that one that's going to be our main two person tent this really is going to be for me to use on my own but every now and then Candice will, will be invited to share it with me so <laughs> we haven't we haven't split the cost of this one this was all out of my own pocket whereas like the Puma the Van Gogh Nevis before that you know we we shared the cost on it so you know we sort of co-own the tents <laughs> which is your tent this is my tent if you put it your tent yeah, so I went to her as she got in it. She was racing to get into the tent. I just went, take your shoes off yeah. inside it. Bless you. This hat, this hat's so funny. It's just so big for her head. So it's like sort of sitting on top of her head. You look lovely though. It's great. It's keeping your head warm, isn't it? Yeah. Brilliant. So yeah, we've we've eaten well. Um, we'll show you, you know, more in the morning, of course. And we, we just wanted to chill out, really. I think it's about 11 p.m. now, so. We're going to get some sleep. I've got some breakfast to cook up in the morning. We'll show you the amazing views. We'll tell you about the hill fall. Uh, I'll tell you what I suppose you all want to see <laughs> is what my initial thoughts are on the tent. I mean, I'm pleased with it so far. I'm really pleased with it. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to wait until I've done a, a couple more camps with it, really. So far, though, I'm pleased with it. It's got a really big porch on it as well. Don't know if the porch needs to be uh, a bit tighter though. It seems a bit, a little bit sort of flimsy. Uh, but it could just be where we're on a little bit of a slope. And I don't think I've, I've pegged it out as tight as it could be. Or I haven't tensioned it properly. So it's probably not the tent's fault. There's loads, yeah, loads of space. You know, we can fit the rucksacks, a little table set up in there. My little arse mat, which I've just spilt a drink on. So it, it looks like it looks like someone shit themselves outside there. Like 
if they've had about <laughs> five curries like Vindaloo's, it looks awful out there. But it smells of chocolate. <laughs> and Candice was laughing, and I was like, no! It was like a, a, a protein, a chocolate protein powder drink that come in the ration pack. I was really looking forward to that. Yeah, because protein means gains. So now the, gra the grass has got the gains, so we're going to open the tent door in the morning. The grass is going to be about five foot high. You know, it's, yeah, anyway, gym, gym jokes, yeah. Moving on, it's an outdoors channel, Tom. We're going to aim to get up for about 7am, something like that. And, yeah, we'll let you know what we think of it, how we sleep. Anyways, it's all good so far, we're having fun. So, unless anything of interest happens in the night, I will see you tomorrow. It's a good night. Good night. Night. Good morning everyone, it's half past seven and the sun I think has come up, I can't be asked. I'm staying in my sleeping bag, it's, it's a bit fresh this morning, I've just had a little bit of breakfast, I've had a, an energy bar, a protein bar, an energy gel sachet, uh, and just some flavoured water, I'll have a cup of tea and some porridge in a minute. We've just seen our first two dog walkers walk past and they didn't even spot us. We're quite far away from the... well we're quite concealed by the footpath so... <coughs> um, looks really clear out there. Actually the mist is, looks amazing. As the mist is there? Yes, it looks amazing. Excellent. Well, um, yeah, I will venture out of the sleeping bag in a minute and show you, but I'm just sort of acclimatising to, to the cold at the moment, but now I'll be fine once I get moving and stuff, it's probably if you, if you don't move it's the worst thing anyway. So the tent, let me see if I can show you the tent, so you can see sort of where me and Candice were, she was sort of laying here, I was here, so we sort of had a little a little gap between us and I'm not touching the the walls of the tent so it was it was spacious. Of course it's nowhere near as spacious as the the OX Puma, I swear that's more like a three person tent uh, than a two person. So you know, it's not as spacious as that, but this is, it's still got more space in it than the Van Gogh Nevis did. So it's somewhere in between the two, and it's, and it's as strong as the Puma. It's got that, you know, the shape, the semi-geodesic design. Uh, the porch seemed okay. We did have a little bit of rain in the night as well. I'll show you the other way, hang on. So there's the porch out there. You've got a little light loop as well, a hanging light loop for uh, lanterns inside the tent. And the doors open on each side. So you can open it that side, Candice's side, or you can open it on the other side as well. And then it's got like a central spine in the middle where those two lines are. So you can tie it back and have the door completely open like that. And then of course we've got an internal door here as well. Uh, it's got like a, where is it, like a little piece of mesh, little piece of mesh at the top. It's quite simple in design and it's only got one zip that just goes all the way around which I was quite surprised about. Um, I thought you'd have a zip that you could, you know, open sort of multiple ways and stuff, but... So it's sort of a simple design, but it's made well. There's a big pocket on each side for storing stuff in. I don't think there's a light loop up the end, no there isn't. So it's just the one light loop up there, but that's fine, that's kind of all we need really. And it sort of does narrow uh, down to the bottom there. So you, 
you wouldn't really want to sleep with your head up that end because Candice was going to and I said well no I think you sleep up this end it's it's better like that so made more sense yeah oh anyways yeah it was a, a good night's sleep I, I slept really well actually um, I was snoring apparently no night terrors the cows there's some cows in the field behind us behind a like a barbed wire fence one of them started off in the early hours apparently and they all started moving and I think they might have congregated to sort of near where we are on the you know behind their fence we're gonna you know get packed away I'll show you the tent show you the views of course about 8 a.m. now I've just done my porridge and tea it's getting quite busy now a lot of dog walkers and stuff about not that they seem to care but I'm gonna start getting everything packed away so sorry I've not filmed a hell of a lot um, I'll give you a quick show around the tent and then we'll, we'll get it taken down we've got everything inside it packed away and then we can just sort of get get the chairs out and just sort of sit and chill out really um, really looking forward to my apple and blueberry porridge. I've got some uh, some of those breakfast fruit toppers in it, like yogurt covered raisins and apricots and mixed nuts and stuff in it. It's pretty good. And I've got an English breakfast tea. I'm looking forward to that. Cause I, it's, it's pretty fresh out today, but the sun's coming up now, and I'm sort of getting the warmth on my back. It's absolutely lovely. Um, yeah. We did have some rain last night, only a little bit for probably half hour. Not even that. Not even that, probably 15, 20 minutes. Uh, it was around about midnight, I think. And you can sort of see there's a bit of rain on the tent, but it's beaded nicely. I say 3000 mil HH, it should do. So this is the tent. So you've all been wanting to see it set up. And you've got a guy line running down the centre from the front you've got one on each side and then I'm going to negotiate my way under this tree oh! and then you've got two guy lines at the back there's an air vent there at the back and then there's one on each side which are conveniently right by your, your face if you're a side sleeper which I thought it was quite good. Yeah, there. That's our rubbish bag. We'll take that with us, of course. Um, yeah, it's actually a really, really simple tent to put up. Like I say, this was the the first time it's ever been used, and we set it up in the dark. 
I did most of it on my own and it was it was pretty easy you can see how it, it's semi geodesic it crosses over there and then at the sides here I do think in strong winds and stuff you'll need well of course you'll need the guidelines out but I think just to give it a bit extra shape it does require the guidelines especially at the sides but yeah I can't really fault it the porch is quite long and narrow you know it tapers to a point and I don't know if it's just because it was on a slope and I pitched it as tall as I could do but it was a little bit flimsy at the front of the porch and I think in, in high winds that's the only point where it could be vulnerable but the, I mean the inside bit is, is bomb proof that's, the, that's the, sh the strongest part is there where all the poles cross over and stuff but We'll have to test it out in some uh, some stronger conditions, you know, worse conditions. I mean, last night we just had a frost, tiny bit of rain, no wind, and it was just cold. But we'll have to see what it's like in strong winds and prolonged rain. I'm sure it'll be fine in the rain. It's the winds I'd like to test it out in, so we'll see. We're getting a lot of dog walkers coming by. Candice is out there, but I think she's like keeping watch or something <laughs> she's bless her yeah uh, we need to get her a new sleeping bag because she didn't tell me she's been getting cold so she wants a four season sleeping bag so if anyone out there can recommend candice a good four season sleeping bag preferably down so it's lightweight and packs up small cheap as well, cheap as well get in the comments and uh give her some suggestions so, because she needs a, a better sleeping bag, don't you? Yeah, it's getting a little bit. Getting a bit nippy. Bless you. She's got a hat though, she likes her hat. Yeah. From Hambo. She ain't got it on now, she no. won't wear it on camera. No. Um, but it, it did keep her warm last night, so that was good. So, cheers, Hambo. Thank you, Hambo. Good tent, I'm, I'm impressed overall, definitely. Um, yeah, you can squeeze two people in it, but it's more suitable it worked better as a one person tent whereas the OEX Puma 2 that's, like that's a good two person tent yeah. you can easily fit two in there with space you know you, you could hold a massive orgy in there if you wanted yeah anyway <laughs> moving on alright let's take the tent down well it's nearly half past nine we've been sat here eating breakfast and just admiring the view we packed up the tents, yeah, sort of a little bit wet, but we can dry that out. Just some flat grass remaining, leave no trace. So we're going to head off that way, back towards the car park, and we'll go and have a look at the, the trig point and see if we can find the remains of the hill fault up there. And then we'll probably sign off. It's been a good little camp, good little test for the Van Gogh Helvellyn, definitely. So enough talking, let's get walking! Ditchling Beacon is the third highest point on the South Downs in South East England. It consists of a large chalk hill with a particularly steep northern face covered with open grassland and sheep grazing areas. Situated just south of the East Sussex village of Ditchling and to the northeast of the city of Brighton, it is the highest point in the county of East Sussex. This represented an excellent position for defensive purposes and is known to be the site of an early Iron Age hillfall. A single defensive bank and ditch enclosed an area of approximately 13.6 acres. Relatively little excavation of the fault has been carried out, however, and the existence of dewponds, paths and tracks as well as regular ploughing activity over the years reduces the likelihood of any significant discoveries in the future. The hillfall is of a rectangular univalate design dating from the Iron Age. It has unfortunately been much mutilated at various points in its long history, suffering from dewpond digging to post-war deep ploughing. A limited excavation in 1985 established an early Iron Age date based on pottery found in a rampart dump 
and a carbon-14 date of 902 to 340 BC taken from animal bone found at the bottom of a rampart ditch. The hillfort defences which survive in the form of earthworks and as crop marks visible only on aerial photographs enclose a roughly rectangular area. The trig point at Ditchling Beacon marks the highest point in East Sussex at 814 feet or 248 metres above sea level. The later beacon located in the northern sector of the hill fault takes the form of a circular mound around 10 metres in diameter and around half a metre high on which a later modern OS trig pillar has been sited. The location of the beacon makes use of the prominent location of the monument which commands extensive views of the Channel Coast to the south and the Weald to the north. Ditchling Beacon was one of a chain of beacons which stretched along the South Downs during the medieval and post-medieval periods. Well, we're back at the car park at Ditchling Beacon and we're going to head off now find a calf somewhere in the nearby area have a look around at some other stuff uh, and then head off to another location for a camp tonight but that is going to be another video so that is the end of this video the maiden voyage of the Van Gogh Helvellyn two-person tent which I'll be using mainly on my own <laughs> but as I say every now and then me and Candice will share it for longer walks and stuff so yeah it was a quick look at it and a little wild camp here at Ditchling Beacon first time I've ever been here uh, the highest point in East Sussex so I want to say thanks to Ben for inspiring me both on the tent and to come to Ditchling Beacon it's been really nice here it's and amazing. it's amazing isn't it the views are, amazing. The views are stunning so uh, keep your eyes peeled for our, both our Instagram accounts as well because we'll be posting some photos and whatnot up there and yeah of course we'll be posting well you'll see this video of course so yeah it's been good the weather's been pretty kind to us it's been chilly it's the first wild camp I think I've done lately where I've felt like yeah this is winter now it, it's cold and yeah. stuff so you know cracking all the winter gear out and stuff but it's good though I'm looking forward to more camps in the winter and stuff like this. And I'm definitely looking forward to coming back and doing more stuff on the South Downs and eventually walking the entire South Downs way. I can see why people do it. It is an incredible place. So, until next time, take care of yourselves, look after each other, stay safe everyone, and remember, get out there and explore. Life's far too short. See you again soon. Bye. 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 <laughs>